Next, we've got this characteristics of value-based leaders. Uh, number one, here we have interpersonal behaviors. You treat people with care, you be careful, kind, support others, you maintain positive relationships. That's an interpersonal behavior. Uh, another characteristic of a value-based leader is a personal actions and expectations. You hold yourself to the highest ethical standard. You strive for honesty, uh, humility, integrity, accept responsibility <laughs> for ethical failings. <coughs> Uh, next, we've got this fairness with others. You have to treat everyone equally. <clears throat> Never be uh, uh, condescending. Uh, accept others' mistakes. And also, you have got this organizational leadership. Articulate and communicate ethical vision. You hold people accountable, and you put ethics above short-term interests. Uh, someone would like uh, any questions on these? Do you understand all of those four? Can you apply them? So let's see, if you do this interpersonal behavior, can you treat everyone with care? Yes. Okay, so let's say when you organize your project, uh, you have to deal with everyone with the same level of uh, you know, care, right? And you'll be helpful and kind to all the people, right? Uh, and then you need to have some sort of a personal action and expectation. So you hold yourself to the highest standard of ethics. You can't cheat so your friends win, right? You can't cheat so you tell your, uh, you know, the people you want them to win how to win, right? If you're going to make the mathematician competition for the best mathematician, you need to do it fair. And you need to hold yourself to the highest ethical uh, standard, right? That's how you become a value-based leader. Uh, and you need to accept responsibility if someone cheats. Someone cheats, it becomes your responsibility. You don't start to blame other people because you're the organizer. <coughs> you want also to treat everyone with the same equal level, right? For example, if you're going to make an announcement or rules or directions, you need to make sure it's available for all the people. All the people can see the rules. This way, it's a fair game or if it's a fair competition. Uh, organizational leadership, you need to communicate ethical vision. So you need to tell people, you know, we're going to play this game, uh, let's say for doing the volleyball. You know, you can't touch the net, you know, we will have this judge, or maybe we'll have these two judges. The judges will follow these type of rules or regulations. Uh, they follow this specific standard. This way, when you communicate the ethical, what's acceptable, uh, how people are accountable, uh, you put ethical above your any short-term interest. That's how you become a value-based leader. Are you guys okay with this? And you would have played a game before and it wasn't fair game. People were cheating. You know, it doesn't become anything interesting, right? Become, it become very unprofessional, become very biased, uh, boring, uh, frustrating, uh, confusing. You see, it's not. It ends with fights. It's not worthy. <coughs> Are you guys okay with this? So uh, a corporate culture and ethics in a global environment. If you're a company manager, if you're, let's say, CAC bank manager, uh, you want to demonstrate that your ethics, your culture is on the top level for the entire organization. Uh, the global environment presents very tough ethical challenges. Uh, if you work in a company that is international, then you've got people from uh, different backgrounds, different cultures. You need to be able to communicate those ethical challenges to everyone. Countries have varied attitudes and beliefs. Uh, components that characterize a global culture, it's a multicultural rather than national values, and a based status on a merit rather than nationality. So here it talks about if you work in a company, let's say if you work in Citibank, you know, Citibank, they operate in several countries. Now, what is acceptable ethical standard in Iraq is not the same as what's acceptable standard in Nicaragua, right? So, uh, so here it becomes more challenging. So if you're a manager, you want to build a culture for the organization that can be, go beyond the national cultures, do you see? 
uh, like any international company. Managers must think broadly about ethics. Is ethics something important? Yes. yes. If you're a manager, you want to make sure that people are following ethics. Yes. What happens if people don't follow ethics? The company is not you know, you know, the company may... Social audits. The idea of a social audit is measures and report ethical, social, <coughs> environmental impact of the company's operation. Do you guys remember in your accounting class, we talked about audit? So you do a financial audit where you check, do we do the recording properly? Do we have all of the documentation? Are the uh, records complete? Uh, did we manage our uh, assets and financial statements and transactions correctly? The same thing for the social. We want to do social audits. So we want to make sure that all of our conduct, all of our activities are up to the highest ethical, social, environmental impact of the company's operations. Uh, this is the end of this chapter. It talks about design essentials. Cultural and ethical values uh, contribute to success. Culture is the key values, beliefs, norms shared by members of the organization. Organization culture, it reinforces strategy and uh, structure. Uh, strong cultures can be adaptive or non-adaptive. Uh, managerial ethics uh, is a critical issue for organizations. Leaders can shape culture and ethics. And global environment presents new ethical challenges and social audits are important tools for companies. Any questions on this? Any questions? Are you guys all okay with all of these sentences and statements? Just need to study this chapter to be. This is the summary, Muhammad. Yes, exactly. All clear, but. Which one is the most difficult? Anything? 